It's not often that marketers in health IT get to flex their creativity muscles, but that's exactly what the team at Health Guerrilla was able to do when they came out with a children's book that tells a story about healthcare's data interoperability challenge. When I heard about this book, I just had to find out more. I wanted to know how they were able to get approval for this content asset in the first place. I also wanted to know what the marketing goal was for this piece and how they got the idea. Hello and welcome to Sway Health, where we bring you the latest insights and interesting stories from the brightest minds in healthcare marketing. I'm Colin Hung, and joining me today is Ali Zaman, Chief Marketing Officer at Health Gorilla. He's going to give us the inside scoop on how his team created the book, A Gorilla's Guide to Health Data Sharing. So sit back, relax, get ready to be inspired, learn some new tricks, and take your marketing game to the next level. Let's jump right in. Ali, welcome to the program. I'm excited that you're here. Thank you for having me. Now, I'm excited to dive into the meat of our conversation around this phenomenal children's book approach that you took to one of your more technical topics. But before we get there, for the benefit of our audience, can you give us a quick overview of Health Gorilla and your uh, role there? Yeah, for sure. So I'm the chief marketing officer of Health Gorilla, uh, where I lead marketing, comms, events, brand, uh, design. Um, I joined Health Gorilla when it was an eight-person startup many years ago. Uh, right after we raised our Series A, um, and you know now we're 130 people growing at a pretty rapid clip. Um, we help uh, companies uh, access and exchange healthcare data uh, from medical records to labs and medications and ADT data. Um, so that so that's what we do. Um, I've spent my career in the health tech marketing world uh, before Health Gorilla. I was the product marketing lead at a company called Psyaps, and before that, I was at Hero Health and medication adherence startup. So I've I've lived and breathed uh, healthcare marketing uh, since I graduated college. So you you fall in the camp of you understand that healthcare marketing is slightly different than regular B to C B to B marketing that all the books are written about. Yeah, just just a little bit. Uh, you <laughs> know, uh, especially it really depends on your customer base. But at Health Gorilla, we really care about um, healthcare organizations and their engineering team. So we want to enable their product managers and engineers to be able to tap into these health data networks and be able to pull data they need uh, to inform clinical decisions. Um, so really it's all about, you know, who is our customer and how do we target them? So let's, let's talk about that because you've targeted this audience with a very unique piece, uh, this children's book. Can you tell us our audience, can you describe this book actually for our audience? Yeah, for sure. So uh, A Gorilla's Guide to Health Data Sharing is a, a jungle-themed storybook that explains interoperability to kids. Um, it's based in an imaginary world ruled by gorillas, uh, and these gorillas are trying to figure out how to share data in a safe and organized way. Um, so through this book, uh, we explain the origins of data exchange purposes, uh, why data is shared, and for what purposes that data can be shared, and uh, how it benefits uh, individuals. Um, and the kicker is that it was drafted by AI. Um, it was drafted by our friendly AI bot, Gordon the Gorilla. Um, and, uh, and so we had been playing around with our own internal AI bot uh, based on ChatGPT, um, but it's trained on the Health Gorilla website content, our blogs, our press releases, a ton of policy documents. And so we spent a good amount of time training this bot to be the most knowledgeable entity about health data sharing. And I was randomly just asking him a few questions, you know, typing in different uh, queries. I asked him to explain the topic of interoperability like I'm an eight-year-old child. And the response was surprisingly good. It was like something that you could literally tell a child and they would understand how, why, why data is shared. And so then I asked it, you know, write a jungle themed uh, story about health data sharing and how it came to be. And it, it turned out a really funny script. Obviously, it needed some work, but that's where the, the idea started. Um, and that's that's kind of the, the first step of the uh, process. That, that is amazing that it, this all came about because of various prompts you were putting into your very own trained uh, AI bot. And you liked it so much that you then 
kind of took it and ran with it and used the the it sounds like you used the straw man uh, structure from the bot to then create the final product. Yeah, exactly. Uh, these these bots have crazy abilities that are very surprising, and the way they can kind of stitch together narratives from data that it has learned is super interesting. Obviously, I don't want to discount how much work it it took internally. You know, I, as soon as we had drafted the script, I went to our head of design, uh, Victoria, and I was like, "Hey, you know, our AI bot Gordon the Gorilla just wrote this book. Needs a bit of work, but I think it could be a really great tool for us to." educate the public on data sharing in a playful and, and kid-friendly way. Um, and, you know, she, she thought initially it was like a crazy waste of time, but then she read the draft and started perfecting it into a real thing. Um, we also used AI to generate the illustrations for the book, uh, believe it or not. So it was a really fun experience. Um, and then, you know, we whipped up a page on our website. Anyone can download a free ebook or order the paperback on Amazon. And uh, that, that's how we got it done. Now, did you run into any in, other than the sort of initial reaction from your uh, your, your uh, designer there? Did you run into any other sort of resistance or like questioning looks when you pitched this to maybe your executive team? Yeah, you know, um, you know, let me back up and start with my philosophy um, sure. on, on content marketing and then dive into how I approached it internally. Um, but I'm I'm always thinking about content uh, as a lever that Health Gorilla can pull to drive inbound interest, brand awareness, credibility. Um, and then I also want our brand to be playful. Like mm. we are a very whimsical company name um, and I want to play that up to the fullest extent. And most health tech marketing can be boring. It, it can be unimaginative because people are you know, playing it safe. Um, and I think one of the challenges uh, for marketing teams everywhere is like, you know, can you make your content so good that people would pay for it? Like, no, no you know, like, it, like no one wants to read a one pager about the six features in your data aggregation platform. Uh, you couldn't pay me to read that. But uh, can content be done so well that people might actually pay their own money to get it? They want it so bad. Um, and so, you know, I, you know, our particular space of data sharing um, you know, it, 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 I think it, 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 no one would disagree if I said it, you know, it lacked a bit of creativity. Um, <laughs> and so we wanted to try something new and different. Um, then I'll also say that the idea of having um, a physical content asset has always been interesting to me, something that we could put in people's hands, ship to people's homes, um, that wasn't about our product, but something that was fun and educational and on brand. Um, and the kids book hit, hits all of those things. It's, it's just like you get really uh, cute content of parents reading it to their kids, makes great handouts at, you know, the health event or hymns. Uh, there's a lot of ways to leverage it. So with that context, I then approached our team and, you know, explained the benefits and how we would be pushing the ball forward. I obviously went to my boss, uh, Steve Yaskin, um, and, you know, thankfully he's given me free reign to kind of use our creativity and help us grow our brand so I'm using that privilege to the fullest extent. Um, and at that point, I, I talked to Victoria, our head of design, that you know, I wanted Health Gorilla to publish a kid's book. Um, and and you know, to be honest, it was a very nimble effort. It was just me and Victoria. We have a broader team, but uh, Victoria and I just uh, got to work, uh, started going back and forth on copy and illustrations using these AI tools. Um, and we were able to, you know, started work in, in June and uh, launching on August 16th. So kind of a quick turnaround. That, that is amazing. I mean, I, I pick up, I want to pick up on two things you said there. First of all, it sounds like you're at a company where um, you have the creative freedom. And, and frankly, that sounds like the mandate to be uh, a little bit out of the box uh, because it is part of your brand. Uh, and to have that, uh, I think a lot of people are going to be jealous when they hear about this. <laughs> so kudos to you. But second of all, um, the fact that it is actually on brand, like it, it is, you, you just mentioned that the health gorilla is meant to be whimsical. It's, it is a super serious topic, but you approach it in a, in a fun, more lighthearted way, which automatically makes you stand out from everyone else who approaches it as if we were writing for journal articles, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, and, and honestly, I want to give credit to our creative design team. I mean, we, we have a, a, a nimble team of, of three designers. Um, each of which is like, you know, an A plus rock star player. And that helps us kind of have this creative powerhouse 
And if we want to bring our brand to life with these experimental projects, um, it's it's quite easy for me to do that. Um, and uh, and so you know, if it's a kids book or it's you know the the you know a, a, a white paper that we're launching, or if it's you know designing our booth presence at the health event. Um, we all, you know, our, every project that we do, we try to do something experimental and new. And, uh, and frankly, you know, there's nowhere else to look. Usually in marketing, you look to what your competitors are doing, or you look to companies you aspire to be like. Um, but frankly, for the stuff that we want to try, what we're noticing is it hasn't been done before. And so uh, that's kind of discomforting when you don't have a reference, uh, when you don't have somebody else to look to. And so you just kind of have to tie it to is this project going to accelerate our goals on a marketing team? Or is it going to accelerate our revenue? Is it going to attract more pipeline? Um, and if so, uh, let's uh, let's take a stab at it in a very lean way that doesn't take up all of our resources. Um, and that that's how we think about uh, getting these you know creative projects done. That actually was going to be my next question. What are the goals that you have for this children's book that you've now created? Yeah, so just at the highest level, it's really about brand awareness, driving inbound interest. We want to engage uh, people in our space that have not known about Health Gorilla, have not learned about it, but might learn about it for the first time. Um, there's you know a lot of people that are posting pictures on LinkedIn of reading the book to their kid, and it, it's great content that you know we're happy to see, and other people learn about our brand that way and might order a copy of the book. Um, I will say uh, that, you know, uh, the, the initial idea for the book actually uh, kind of came earlier because we we had uh, uh, done a survey of a thousand patients on data sharing. Like we wanted to ask patients how they feel about uh, the fact that their medical records are now shared uh, without their explicit permission, obviously under permitted purposes like treatment, like, you know, providers sharing medical records with other providers. Um, and so we ran this survey and it became like very clear that there was a lot of fear and discomfort and anxiety about who's doing what with my data. Um, and so we summarized those findings in our state of patient privacy report, but it triggered a lot of ideas internally about how we could make data sharing more people friendly, more digestible, um, how we could educate the public on, on what's going on in this space. Um, and so that's uh, and so if we could accomplish that, if we could contribute to public education, um, awareness of uh, why data sharing exists, how it uh, improves healthcare, and how it imp actually enables the individual to take control of their their health and their records, um, then we 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 did the job. And so it's not just all about pipeline; it's also about educating uh, you know the public and and uh, advancing their knowledge about what's going on in the interoperability ecosystem. Yeah, I mean, I was going to say, you know, having looked at the ebook, it, it doesn't, or sorry, looked at that, the children's book, it is, does not appear to be purely a lead generation uh, tool, right? It, 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 it is, I look at it almost like a PSA in the way that you've approached it and the content that's inside it. Yeah, yeah. Most of our content, we're not actually talking about, uh, you know, our products, right? Like we're like, we, we have a, a podcast where, you know, we have four experts assemble and talk about hot issues in the interoperability space. We I actually forbid them to talk about our products, you know, like it's just, <laughs> it's not engaging interesting content. If you're just talking about product, talk about products to the people who want to talk about products with you, right? Like if they're coming to us saying they want to buy, then you talk to talk to them about what, what we're selling. But um, for the public to keep them engaged with our brand, you just have to launch very interesting uh, content that evokes an emotional response. That's that's the goal. Um, and so with this book, you know, clearly we've been we've been texted a lot of pictures of parents and their kids sharing what they do for a living, or you know, sharing this this book, and and that itself, uh, you know, makes you feel good, right? And like, and so that's that's the goal with this content. So what's the, you mentioned a little bit, but what's the uh, reaction being to the children's book? I mean, you mentioned that some people are posting pictures of it themselves, reading it to their kids on LinkedIn, but, but in general, what's the reaction been? Yeah, so it's been very positive. Um, so, so we're launching it on Wednesday, the 16th uh, okay. of August. And so, but we've been doing a, a, a early rollout to our, you know, our VIP network um, and, uh, and it's been getting rave reviews. 
Um, the, you know, the idea of babies and kids learning from a book generated by AI is just like funny and, and awesome. Uh, and, uh, you know, there's, there's, you know, I, I just saw a picture of, uh, on LinkedIn of, of Zoe Barber, who is the policy leader at, at the Sequoia project, who is reading it to her little baby. Um, and so, uh, you know, I've been getting texts of, uh, cute, funny pictures of kids, trying to digest this book that their mom or dad gave them. Um, and, uh, and so it's just a lot of, a lot of, uh, funny, funny content, uh, that I'm getting in return. Uh, but, and we'll also be handing out, uh, copies at the Civitas Networks for Health event in Maryland next week. Uh, so hopefully a lot of people will be able to read it and, you know, sh share their own stories. Sounds, sounds like a lot of fun. And I'm sure you're going to have it at, at HLTH or health as well. So Absolutely. Uh, I think a lot of people uh, yeah. will appreciate that. Now, you said it's not available yet, but where can people go to download this book or get a copy of it when you release it? Yeah, sure. So uh, so it'll be on our website. Uh, people just go to healthgorilla.com and they'll see a pop-up of our, our scurry book uh, link. Uh, and if they just follow us on LinkedIn uh, as well, we'll be promoting it throughout the week. Um, but it'll be a, a nice home uh, for on our website. And then if they want to order it on Amazon, the paperback is available. All they have to do is search a, a gorilla's guide to health data sharing, or they can search the author, Gordon the Gorilla, uh, and it will it will pop up uh, so they can grab a copy there as well. Awesome. Ali, thank you so much for the information you shared today. It's been great having you on the program and, and so happy that you were able to create this uh, amazing children's book. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me. I want to thank Ali for spending time with us today and for sharing the story behind the jungle story of health data sharing. My takeaway from this conversation is that it's okay to think a little outside the box or maybe a lot outside the box when it comes to marketing a health IT solution. Even if your brand image isn't as whimsical as what Health Gorillas is, that doesn't mean you have to produce boring content. As Ali put it, why not think about creating a piece of content that people would actually pay to receive? And hey, if you enjoyed this interview as much as I did, please click that like button and subscribe. Also, head on over to sway.health. That's sway with two A's dot health. That's where you'll find a lot more great content like this. I'm Colin Hung. Thanks for being here. And I'll catch you on the next video.